Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how the hormone insulin is used to control the blood glucose concentration. You should then be able to describe type 1 and type 2 diabetes and how these conditions are treated. And finally, if you're a higher tier student, then you should be able to describe the role of the hormone glucagon. In the last video we looked at the endocrine system. We saw that glands release hormones into the bloodstream. These hormones bind to specific target organs where they trigger an effect. Now a really important example of this is used to control the concentration of glucose in the blood. Glucose is needed by every cell to release energy by respiration. So it's very important that the concentration of glucose in the blood is kept as constant as possible. And we've already seen that this is part of homeostasis. The blood glucose concentration is monitored by the pancreas. Now after a meal rich in carbohydrates, the concentration of glucose in the blood can rise. This is sensed by the pancreas and the pancreas produces the hormone insulin. Insulin travels in the bloodstream all around the body and it triggers body cells to take up glucose from the blood. Insulin also triggers liver and muscle cells to store excess glucose as a storage molecule called glycogen. So because glucose is now being taken out of the blood and stored, the concentration of glucose in the blood returns to its normal level. In other words, homeostasis has taken place. Now in some people, their blood glucose control does not work effectively. These people have diabetes and we're going to look at that now. There are two types of diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the pancreas does not produce enough insulin. I'm showing you here a graph of blood glucose in a person with type 1 diabetes and a person who does not have diabetes. At the start of the experiment, both people ate a meal containing the same amount of carbohydrate. As you can see, in both cases, the concentration of glucose in the blood rises. In the person without diabetes, you can see that the blood glucose concentration rapidly returns to its normal level, and that's due to the effect of insulin. However, in the person with type 1 diabetes, the blood glucose concentration rises and then stays at a high level, and that's because the pancreas cannot produce sufficient insulin. People with type 1 diabetes monitor their blood glucose concentration and they inject themselves with insulin if blood glucose rises too much, for example after a carbohydrate rich meal. So looking at the graph again, when the person with type 1 diabetes injects themselves with insulin, you can see that their blood glucose concentration falls. In type 2 diabetes, the body cells stop responding to insulin produced by the pancreas. So again in these patients, blood glucose levels can rise too high. Type 2 diabetes is often treated with a diet containing a controlled level of carbohydrates. The aim of this is to prevent the blood glucose concentration from rising too high. People with type 2 diabetes are also advised to take exercise. Now a major risk factor for type 2 diabetes is obesity. And as obesity levels are increasing in the UK, we're seeing more people with type 2 diabetes. OK, if you're a foundation student, then you can stop watching now. However, higher tier students need to keep watching. So as we've seen, if the blood glucose concentration rises, then the pancreas releases the hormone insulin. But what happens if the blood glucose concentration falls, for example in between meals? If the blood glucose concentration is too low, then the pancreas releases the hormone glucagon into the bloodstream. Glucagon triggers liver cells to convert glycogen stores back to glucose, and this glucose is released into the blood. This causes the blood glucose concentration to return to normal. I'm showing here a person's blood glucose concentration, and this person does not have diabetes. As you can see, the blood glucose concentration rises slightly and falls slightly over the course of the day. That's because the blood glucose concentration is controlled by a balance between insulin and glucagon. If the glucose concentration rises, then the pancreas releases insulin, and this causes the glucose concentration to fall. However, when the glucose concentration falls to a certain level, the pancreas releases glucagon, and this causes the glucose concentration to rise again. Because insulin and glucagon have got opposite effects on the blood glucose concentration, Scientists say that they form a negative feedback cycle, and we're going to look at negative feedback in a later video. 
Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on the control of blood glucose in my Vision workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above.